so that when you and I see a building, we may see it differently. You may see it through the eyes of one who would like to own it. I may see it through the eyes of one who admire it, with no feeling of possession. But we do see the same building, only we see it differently. So when we descended, we agreed to dream in concert. So while we walk this earth, we see the same streets, therefore we know the same number, and we can go where we want to go because we are dreaming in concert. Well, we are dreaming, my dear. This whole vast world is the dream of the gods who descended. But because we agreed to dream in concert, there is no confusion. Had we agreed to dream individually and all play solo, this would be the wildest, maddest thing in the world. But we agreed to dream in concert. Now, may I tell you, when I invite you to go all out and to imagine that you are now the man, the woman that you want to be, some will tell you that will lead to madness. May I tell you, it will not. The only thing that would lead to madness would be to doubt it. The minute doubt sets in and you would like to believe it, but reason tells you it isn't true, and you begin to doubt, then descends what the world will call a mental division, certain madness. For doubt is the only devil in the world. That's doubt. If you could go all out and believe it, and regardless of what the whole vast rational world will tell you, you won't go mad. The whole thing will become a part of your dream world. You'll bring it into and fit it in without any difficulty into the world. So someone born poor, very poor, he began to dream that he had wealth and that he had fame. Well, at the moment, it would seem insane, his dream, but he persisted in his dream. But when the dream became true and his fame was established and his wealth established, it seemed perfectly natural to those not knowing his dream. So everyone is dreaming. But if you begin to doubt your dream and still try to make it true, but doubting all the time, you are heading towards a little breakout. But you will not break out if you go all out in your wonderful claim that you are what you desire to be. Because all things are possible to God. And the God spoken of is right where you are seated. That's the God of whom the Bible speaks. So when the gods came down in the likeness of men, here they are, and some found a female garment there, and some a male woven with clay. And so God himself enters death's door, this door of death, always with those who enter, and lays down in the grave with them, in visions of eternity until they awake and see Jesus. And the linen clothes lying there which the females had woven for them. They seem to be woven in the womb of a woman, and they were, no question about it. But they were simply emanations of a soul. Woven in the womb of a woman, between a cooperation of a male-female. But the soul emanating is neither male nor female, for it emanates a male garment or a female garment. And where is it? In this world of death. And take it off, emanates it again. This time without the use of the womb of a woman. Doesn't need it anymore. For we are told in the ninth chapter of Hebrews. For as it was appointed for all men to die once. And then comes the judgment. So Christ was offered once for the sins of many. And then. He will appear a second time, not concerning sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Well, you've died already. Forget the death. When you go before I go, it may be said of you that you died. I will hear the news that so-and-so died. You didn't die at all. You've already died. You only die once. When we fell, all in one body, that's when we died. We left our heavenly home. And the glory that was ours to come down and assume the limitations of a flesh, which is called that of a slave. And so we've already died. If we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. So the death is over. Only once do you die. 
So though you go through the gate and men call you dead, you aren't dead. Simply emanate the same body, only it's young. It's new. Twenty years old, nothing missing. Unaccountably new, you can't explain it. I mean, I tell you, the majority who go through don't even know they've gone through and take the young body for granted, just as we take everything in this world for granted. A miracle goes on all day long in my body. I eat tonight's dinner, and it's been converted, unknown to my conscious reasoning mind, into blood, to tissue, to bone. And no man on earth can make one drop of blood. Transplant a heart, but he can't grow one. Transplant all kinds of organs, but he can't grow one. He can't make one drop of blood. Been trying forever, they can't make a drop of living blood. They can't make one hair of the head. So they said, now oh, this man would have lived three weeks if he didn't have the transplant. So we're going to give him the transplant and he lived 18 days. That's the first one in South Africa. And suppose the other one does live, he will not live one hour beyond his span of time. As told us in the Sermon on the Mount. Who by being anxious can add one hour to his span of life. Man goes blindly on believing that he can do these things. And all that it's doing is publicizing the surgeons and the medical world. It isn't doing a thing to this being that you really are. Or you are not anything he thinks you are. So I am dying. A poor old heart is all gone. Liver gone. All things gone. I should get out and emanate something new and wear it. And they're going to put a new heart in me. They're all hoping this night that someone will die suddenly. And then get their heart, so that the doctor can have the experiment. If they didn't die suddenly, leaving a good heart, they couldn't use it. So let her be good and healthy, but die. Either kill her, or do something, and let her give the heart up. And they're using that, and people are eating it up as though, isn't this marvelous? Isn't this fantastic? And the world goes blindly on in the world of sleep, not knowing who they are. Well, I tell you, you are the Adam, made in the image of God, that is the Son of God. And out of you came your Eve, and Eve is the body that you are wearing. And you cleave to it, and you cleave to it so tightly, that finally you become one flesh, so whenever it is hurt, you are hurt. And that is the Adam and Eve of Scripture, therefore it is not a myth. It does come out of you, but certainly not out of this little bone on my side called a rib. For the word zealot means a portion. That's what it means. So, man has no body distinct from his soul. That called body is a portion of soul discerned by the five senses. The chief inlets of soul in this age. That's all that it is. You are a living soul. Destined to become a life-giving spirit. And as you fall, you emanate. A body, because you have to have a body to function in this world. And you can automatically do it. The minute you're called dead, you aren't dead at all. You're alive. And a body emanated out of your own being. Young. New. Not one part missing. Nothing missing. If you had an arm missing, the arm is not missing. If you had all your limbs off, as many today have all these off after the war, they're not missing. The whole thing is replaced. And when they're replaced, he takes it for granted. 